anti-government protests in Iran are growing over the death of a 22-year-old woman while in custody of the country's so-called morality police. In response, Iranian women are protesting the streets in defiance of morality laws. Video from the protest shows many burning their hijabs and cutting their hair. Iran's authorities have responded with a violent crackdown. The AP reporting that at least nine people have died since the protests began. NBC's Ali Aruzi filed this report from Tehran. Widespread protests and clashes in Iran between Islamic Republic security forces and demonstrators angry over the death of a 22-year-old woman in police custody continue for a sixth consecutive day, engulfing almost 90 cities and towns across the country. According to State TV, at least 17 people have been killed so far. The scale and scope and nature of Iran's ongoing unrest is the worst since the Islamic Revolution in 1979 and is one of the most serious crises the ruling establishment have had to face in over four decades. At the heart of the issue is, is social freedoms, in particular, women's rights. Women in Iran have to abide by a very strict dress code. If they don't, the punishment can be severe. The death of mass Amini, while being held by the morality police, touched a raw nerve, culminating in these protests where women are burning their hijabs in public and running battles with security forces are constant. The police presence is massive. Authorities have all but cut off the internet and blocked apps like WhatsApp and Telegram so people can't mobilize or upload videos to share information about the government's rolling crackdown, a tactic the government often employs in times of unrest. Ali Aruzi for us. I'm joined now by Jasmine Ramsey, Deputy Director for the Center for Human Rights in Iran. Thank you so much, Jasmine, for being here. Help us put this moment into context. You have these mass protests. You also have a death toll that is climbing, mass arrests. Do you see this as an inflection point for Iranians and for Iranian women in particular? It's really important to note that this protest is a part of an evolution of the protest movement in Iran in the last six years. Members of all facets of society have been coming out and demanding their rights. And this time we're focused around women's rights. We're hearing chants of death to the dictator. There's mm. Iranians are literally risking their lives to call for social and political change. What do you want the West to understand about this moment? And what should we know about Masa Amini and her death? It's very important to note two things about that. The first is world leaders, especially leaders that have relations with Iran, should call publicly and forcefully for the Iranian government to allow protests without the threat of lethal violence and arbitrary arrest. That kind of pressure matters. Uh, Iran needs the kinds of relations that it has, and its worst fear is if these kinds of uh, leaders start speaking out uh, against what, they're, what we're seeing on the ground. Also, very important important to know that Masa's father risked imprisonment by speaking to an Iranian Persian media outlet and directly disputing the version of events that the Iranian government has put out into the streets. And by the looks of it, the Iranian people don't believe the government either. Um, he said that his, his child who was visiting Tehran died as a result of beatings in state custody after being released, uh, arrested by the morality police. So it's important to hear his words as well. Oh, it's so important, and we appreciate your bringing them to us. You heard Ali Aruzi talk about the fact that as part of these protests, women have been ripping off their hijabs, their head coverings that they've been required to wear since the 1970s. Put that into a broader context. What is the significance? What's the importance of that? And what's the impact? After the Iranian revolution, the government turned the hijab, which should be a choice, into a tool of political repression. And what we're seeing now on the streets are people, women, uh, taking their hijabs off and standing side by side with men, calling for this compulsory hijab rule to be lifted because it is used as an excuse to repress women. That's why they have the morality police on the streets detaining women and anyone that's you know not complying with this arbitrary dress code. Um, so they're really presenting a serious challenge to one of the platforms of the Islamic Republic. 
And we, of course, saw at the U.N. General Assembly this week President Biden saying he stood with the brave women of Iran. But what does the world need to do to help make this moment be one of actual change? So it's important to note, yes, Internet and phone access is very disrupted or shut off in various parts of the country. That's because the Iranian government really doesn't like to have a light uh, on it when it's committing atrocities against the people. But the most important thing is to keep the coverage on. And again, for world leaders, especially those that have relations with Iranian officials, to call for an end to this force and to allow people to protest. Th this anger that you're seeing, it, it's the result of years and years of dealing with an unresponsive government that has only responded with repression. Jasmine Ramsey, thank you so much for speaking to us about this potentially pivotal moment. We really appreciate it. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.